Good morning, folks. Welcome to St. George's Episcopal Church in West Asheville, also known right now as your home, wherever you are. Happy Easter. Good morning. It is so good to be with you. Um, you will hear the sounds of a potentially waking up baby whenever that happens. Um, the sounds of a grumbly little pup who is asleep in his crate over here. And I hope that you are experiencing all the holy sounds that are in your home, uh, whether that's your pets or people in your neighborhood. I want to thank, first of all, thank Beth Lassiter so much for heading to the church this morning and ringing our bell for five minutes. Um, and she also sent me some amazing photos. I'm using my, my phone right now, so I can't show you, but... Um, some amazing photos of the flowers all around St. George's, and they were just gorgeous, especially the, I think they're called bleeding hearts, that they're just these lovely little hearts. So anyway, thank you, Beth, for ringing our bell, and um, welcome to Easter. Um, I wanted to let you guys know there are um, song lyrics and, um, and the readings and all of the responses are in a bulletin that you can find on our webpage. Um, I actually didn't change it from last night, so if you go click on the Palm Sunday link, or if you go to the drop-down menu on our main website and just click Bulletins and Past Sermons, then scroll down past uh, Easter Vigils uh, bulletin from last night, and right below that you will find the bulletin for the service this morning. So I'll give you a moment to do that. Um, and while some of us are doing that, you don't need to at all if you want to just um, be present by observing. I invite you all to take a deep breath. Take in another deep breath of gratitude for the air you are breathing, the lungs that are receiving it, the life in your body the light that is coming through the windows of your home this beautiful morning, this beautiful, drippy, dismal-ish morning. Put your feet on the ground. Feel the floor beneath you. Remember that even though this is not the Easter service that we expected to have this year, where we expected to be with one another and possibly with family members, people from out of town, visitors, folks who maybe come to church just once a year or twice a year that we get to see, even though this service is not that, do recognize that we are together. Right now there are 17 people, not including us, who are present and watching this live right now that means that we are with each other. There are 17 people in the sanctuary, folks. <sighs> the place you are, your home, your living room, or your bed, or wherever you are this morning, this is our sanctuary. And we are grateful for the fact that God has kicked us out of our familiar places. I'm not grateful for the reasons, but I am grateful for this new opportunity and this new way of being together. So welcome to our living room and pull up the bulletin if you would like and we'll get started. Right. 
secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. I invite you all to sing with me. Gloria, Gloria, in excelsis Deo, Gloria, Gloria, Alleluia, Alleluia, Gloria, Gloria, in excelsis Deo, Gloria, Gloria, Alleluia, Alleluia, Gloria, Gloria, in excelsis Deo, Gloria, Gloria, Alleluia, Alleluia. May God be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. God of our joy and of our sorrow, you entered a world in crisis as the vulnerable child of an occupied people. Teach us to live even as we fear death, to sing even as we feel silenced, to love even as we are separated, to act even when we are afraid. Care for the sick and the suffering. Bless the dying. Attend to the lonely. Release the captive. And all for your love's sake. Amen. A reading from the scriptures of Israel from the book of Jeremiah, chapter 31, verses 1 through 6. At that time, says the Lord, I will be the God of all the families of Israel, and they shall be my people. Thus says the Lord, 
The people who survived the sword found grace in the wilderness. When Israel sought for rest, the Lord appeared to him from far away. I have loved you with an everlasting love. Therefore, I have continued my faithfulness to you. Again, I will build you, and you shall be built, O virgin Israel. Again, you shall take your tambourines and go forth in the dance of the merrymakers. Again, you shall plant vineyards on the mountains of Samaria. The planters shall plant and shall enjoy the fruit. For there shall be a day when sentinels will call in the hill country of Ephraim. Come, let us go up to Zion, to the Lord our God. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. Our psalm for the day is Psalm 118. Give thanks to the Lord who is good. The mercy of the Lord endures forever. Let Israel now proclaim. The mercy of the Lord endures forever. The Lord is my strength and my song, and has become my salvation. There is a sound of exultation and victory in the tents of the righteous. The mighty hand of the Lord has triumphed. The mighty hand of the Lord is exalted. The mighty hand of the Lord has triumphed. I shall, I shall not die, but live, live. And, and declare the works of the Lord. The, the Lord has punished me sorely, but did not hand me over to death. Open, open for me the gates of righteousness. I will enter them. I will offer thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. Those who are righteous may enter. I will give thanks to the Lord who answered me and has become my salvation. The same stone which the builders rejected has become, become the chief cornerstone. This, this is the Lord's doing, and it, and it is marvelous in our eyes. On, On this day the Lord has acted. acted. We, we will rejoice and be glad in it. A reading from the New Testament, from the Acts according to the Apostles, chapter 10, verses 34 through 43. Peter began to speak to Cornelius and the other Gentiles. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John announced how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, how he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree, but God raised him on the third day and it allowed him to appear, not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him, that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. I invite you to stand in body or in spirit for the reading of the gospel the Holy Gospel of our Savior Jesus Christ according to John. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciples, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciples set out and went toward the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter following him, fo came following him and went into the tomb. 
he saw the linen wrappings lying there and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple who reached the tomb first also went in and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture so that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, bent over to look into the tomb. And she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabunai, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. The Gospel of our Lord. Glory, Glory to, to you, Lord Christ. Christ. to do what I did last night, um, which was I was having a, a moment of feeling a little tired of technology, and so I just decided to pick up the phone <laughs> instead of talking to it across across the room and um, imagine all y'all's faces right here with me, with us, myself in your presence. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O God, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. This morning we celebrate what is, perhaps other than, than Christmas, maybe even better than Christmas. For me, it is my most joyful day of the liturgical year. We celebrate the resurrection of Jesus, the rising of the sun in the morning, the light that has come into the world and that the darkness could not overcome. But I want to talk today about something a little more somber and a little more sinister. This morning we shift from the cold grave to the empty grave, to the body of Christ risen, now, I used to describe myself as a Lent person, and um, it was mostly because it, during the season of Lent, the alleluias are gone, the songs are sort of sad and um, not quite as joyful, a little more dialed back. The emphasis is on repentance and sorrow and putting to death the things that do not give us life. And even though Lent is not necessarily just a sad time, the sort of solemnity and sorrow of the season of Lent fit me. So I described myself as a Lent person. Now, those of you who know me well know where I'm going with this. 
which is to be which is to say that I am going in the direction of recognizing that when I thought I was a Lent person, I have now come to realize that I was depressed. And um, so as I was preparing to preach an Easter sermon, I thought, I can't talk about depression. It's, it's too depressing <laughs> on Easter, on one of the happiest days. But I want to talk about this because now is a difficult time. It's difficult for all of us. And I've seen a lot of Christians do this thing where they say, I have it so much better than so-and-so. Either I'm, I'm sick, but I'm not as sick as this person. Or I've been struggling with this, but I see people around me who are struggling more. Or even people who are very, very ill saying, well, at least I have a house. At least I have money. At least I have these things. And sort of comparing themselves and their own struggles to other people's struggles. I did that for years and years and years. And what I now recognize was depression. It felt so much like a part of me that I had trouble recognizing that it was actually an illness. That I was actually, that my suffering was something that didn't have to just be part of me. That I didn't have to absorb it. For a long time, I suffered and and compared myself to other people. Compared myself to people who had such severe depression that it ended in suicide. To people who had struggled and struggled. And even when I was at my lowest and at my my most um, despairing, I still discounted my own suffering. Because it wasn't like a broken bone. It wasn't something that I could show the world I bring this up right now because when we shift from the grief of the tomb to the joy of the resurrection, not all of us are experiencing that. There are some Lenten people who are experiencing Lent that will continue. There are people who experience the shadows even after the sun has risen. One of my favorite authors, William Styron, um, had an experience with depression and wrote a memoir about it called Darkness Visible. And I wanted to read you just a little section from it because I think often hearing other people describe depression um, can be really helpful in recognizing if it's something that you're going through. And I'm not assuming that everybody right now is depressed. Um, He writes, loss in all of its manifestations is the touchstone of depression. In the progress of the disease and most likely at its origin, I felt loss at every hand. The loss of self-esteem is a celebrated symptom and my own sense of self had all but disappeared along with any self-reliance. One dreads the loss of all things, all people close and dear There is an acute fear of abandonment. Being alone in the house, even for a moment, cosmic, exquisite pain and trepidation. Now imagine what those feelings are like if you're not experiencing them yourself. To be at this time where you are asked to stay home, where you are urged to stay home, to experience that kind of pain that is not visible, that is not as visible as a broken bone, that perhaps is not a diagnosis, that perhaps you don't even want to acknowledge in yourself. The risen life of Christ in us, the resurrected life of Jesus that is in all of us, and I would claim that is in the whole universe, that has impacted everything that exists. That risen life lifts us and heals us, but it does not 
make diabetes go away. It does not set a broken bone. And it does not end depression. I want to say that again. The risen life of Christ in us heals us and lifts us. It's a resurrected life. And yet it does not cure disease. It does not heal broken bones, and it does not fix depression or any other mental illness or any other struggle that you have. And that is good news because that means that when you experience those things, that does not mean that you are not close to Jesus. That does not mean that you are not right there living a life in which the resurrected Christ is active in your life, in your body, in your mind, in your soul. It may mean that just like diabetes, just like a broken bone, just like addiction, you have an illness that needs help. So now is a time when we are being asked to be physically separated from each other. This is a time when it is even more anxiety producing to turn on the radio or the news or the TV to even hear from friends. This is a time when most of us will struggle even more profoundly with things like loneliness, self-isolation, doubt, anxiety, sleeplessness, too much sleep, addiction, and depression. There's a song by, I think, Mavis Staples that um, Alan introduced me to a couple years ago that I absolutely love. And in the song, she sings, You are not alone. I'm with you. Actually, I can't remember it if I don't sing it. You are not alone. I'm with you. Open up, this is a raid. Gotta get through to you. You're not alone. It's a good song. And I don't think I've broken copyright by singing that little of it. Open up, this is a raid. It's the image of someone who is just knocking the door down and saying, you are not alone. I've got to get through to you and help you know that you are not alone. So if you are experiencing any of these things, there are numbers you can call. You can call me. My number is um, is out there in the world. You know how to reach me. You know how to reach each other. I urge you to reach out, to take whatever shadow you are walking under seriously and to know that you are not alone and that reaching out to other people, even if you may think that it won't help, It will help. We have been called by Christ to be his body, to be his body here on earth, to be Christ's hands and heart in this broken world. And if we don't let one another in, we will not allow Christ to be Christ to us. So know that the risen God, the risen Christ, the risen Jesus, is in you, healing you, and comforting you. And know that the invitation of that is to love yourself as much as Jesus loves you. And reach out to others when you need to. Reach out. Reach out. And let us lift each other up in this resurrected life. Amen. invite you to join us in our liturgical affirmation found in your bulletin.
together. You, O oh God, are supreme and holy. You create our world and give us life. Your purpose overarches everything we do. You have always been with us. You are God. You, O oh God, are infinitely generous, good beyond all measure. You came to us before we came to you. You have revealed and proved your love for us in Jesus Christ, who lived and died and rose again. You are with us now. You are God. You, O oh God, are Holy Spirit. You empower us to be your gospel in the world. You reconcile and heal. You overcome death. You are our God. We worship you. Amen. With all our heart and with all our mind, let us pray to God, saying, God, have mercy. For the peace from above, for the loving kindness of God, and for the salvation of our souls, let us pray to God. God, have mercy. For the peace of the world, for the welfare of the Holy Church of God, and for the unity of all peoples, let us pray to God. God, God have, have mercy. mercy. For Michael, our presiding bishop, Jose, our bishop, Aaron, our priest, and for all clergy and people, let us pray to God. God, God have, have mercy. mercy. For all global, national, state, and local leaders, and for all in positions of power, that they may be held accountable to the people impacted by their decisions, let us pray to God. God, God have, have mercy. mercy. For the city of Asheville, for every city and community, and for those who live in them, let us pray to God. God, God have, have mercy. mercy. For God's good earth and for the wisdom and will to conserve it, let us pray to God. God, God have, have mercy. mercy. For the aged and infirm, for the widowed and orphans, and for the sick and the suffering, let us pray to God. God, God have, have mercy. mercy. For the poor and the oppressed, for the unemployed and the destitute, for prisoners and captives, and for all who remember and care for them, let us pray to God. God, have mercy. For all young people, protect and guide them that they may grow in love and hope, and may find your peace and grace throughout their lives. God, God have, have mercy. mercy. For all who have died in the hope of the resurrection, and for all the departed, let us pray to God. God, God have, have mercy. mercy. For deliverance from all danger, violence, oppression, and degradation, let us pray to God. God, God have mercy. mercy. That we may end our lives in faith and hope, without suffering and without reproach, let us pray to God. God, God have, have mercy. mercy. In the communion of saints, let us commend ourselves and one another and all our life to Christ our God. To, to thee, O God. God. We invite you to confess your sins against God and our neighbor, saying together, God of all mercy, we confess that we have sinned against you, opposing your will in our lives. We have denied your goodness in each other, in ourselves, and in the world you have created. We repent of the evil that enslaves us, the evil we have done, and the evil done on our behalf. Forgive, restore, Lord, and strengthen us through our Savior Jesus Christ, that, that we, we may, may abide, abide in your love, love and, and serve only, only your will. will. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in everlasting life. Amen. I invite you to pass the peace to your family members, to yourself to your pets, to your neighbors. May the peace of Christ be always with you. And also with you. Peace, baby. Baby. Mm. Peace. Peace. Oh, I'll read them since I'm up here already. Yeah. Peace be with you. I'm going to read a few passings of the peace if you would like to pass us the peace go ahead and send it to us through a message barbara peterson possibly lyle peterson too peace be with you both peace lyle 
Peace to all, says Denny. Peace be with you, says Yvonne. Peace be with you, says Tabitha. Peace be with you, everyone. Peace, everyone, says Ben. Peace, dear friends, from both of us, say Andrew and Lindsay Krinks from Nashville. Peace, Elizabeth. Barbara Lassiter says, the peace of the Lord. And I think Sarah, or Noel, St. George's Episcopal Church, says peace. <laughs> Peace and love and blessings, Willie Israel. Peace from Beth Lassiter and possibly Mark and Isaac. Peace from Everett and Becky and Henry, our dog. Peace, Henry. Oh, Joe, Joe Hamlin, Joseph Hamlin, peace to you and sisters Molly and Marsha. So glad to have you with us. Peace be with you. I want to take a moment, just a moment. If you feel like it, close your eyes and imagine what it's going to be like when we are all back together again. Imagine all of the hugs. I realized after saying this the other day that, um, that someone had mentioned to me that they will never take a hug for granted again. And then I realized that it was, that was from our canon, canon to the ordinary Augusta Anderson. We'll never take hugs for granted again. So I feel the peace from you. The spirit is moving on the interwebs. Thanks be to God. Peace, peace, peace. I do have a few announcements. Um, last week I found out that, um, no really, this week, yeah, this, this past week, I heard from uh, Father Lynn, who is at Deerfield Episcopal Retirement Community in Asheville, that they really need masks right now. Um, and so at the, uh, there should be a link um, in the bulletin if you would like to make a mask, if you're crafty or sewy, um, either reach out to me about that um, or go ahead and start sewing. I put the link to the mask that I made. It's just a simple YouTube video. Um, really involves some pretty straightforward sewing. Um, and if you would like some guidance about that, feel free to uh, shoot me an email. Um, be happy to do that. There's also a need uh, from the Church of the Advocate. Uh, they serve a great big meal uh, that recently, I think, went up from, I think they're serving about 150 to 180 meals now. Um, and they need people who are, and this is important, who are not high risk. So folks under 65 who don't have any pre-existing conditions and all those things, it's still a risk. But they're asking for three to five people to help out with their meals. Um, and those are on Sundays, I think from 1 to 3.30. The details are in your bulletin. And um, if you have any joys or concerns, go ahead and send them in a message now. Um, this is the way that we at St. George's help each other pray for each other. It's one of the ways that, um, that we do reach out to each other. Um, so I'll, I'll give you a few minutes if you have a, a prayer concern or a joy that you would like to share with all of us. Um, please send that in a message now and we will read those.
concern for all our Peacemaker families and the Deverview community. Gratitude for the services and getting connected through them. Joy for the garden and Willie's uh, Willie's garden and getting tilled and lettuce is starting to come up. Um, I'm going to put a concern out there for uh, the storms that are rolling through for people to take care of what they need to take care of outside and there's a lot of storms that are going to be rolling through, so hopefully they are nothing too serious. Uh, Beth lifting up folks, folks who are homeless, insecure housing, those who are hungry. Uh, Barbara, gratitude and joy for all of us, all, everybody, all of you, and for the technology that allows us to be together. <laughs> joy for watching Ursa and Ursa's family. We happen to be... Those people, thank you, Barbara. <laughs> yeah. I have a joy this morning. Um, I left I left him in his little uh, crib, sitting down, and I went brush my teeth, and I came back, and I assumed that Alan had helped him to stand up with his little hands on the edge of the thing, and Alan said, "I I thought you had left him that way." So somehow, unless the dog helped him. He got up to standing all by himself, which is just amazing. So and, gratitude yeah. for that. Amazing and and terrifying. And terrifying. <laughs> awesome. Uh, uh, it, it, yeah, there we got one more. All these quiet and loud moments with our family. <laughs> totally. Yeah. Gratitude for Ursa. Thank you. The world leaders calling for a global ceasefire. Amen. Mm -hmm. Yes. Joy for being able to sneak in an Easter egg hunt Yay. with Annabelle in the yard before the rain came. Yep. Yay. Just before. Joy for babies. Yeah. And fur babies. <laughs> fur babies. Fur babies. Uh, I think for those who aren't clear, those are uh, animals, people's pets. <laughs> I'm hoping that's the case. <laughs> who knows? I think they're babies. Either way, covered, joy, covered for them. joy for them. Joy for them. All right. Also, I've heard that New York City's emissions uh, have been cut down by 50%, and so the air is clearer than it has been in a long, long time. Um, grateful for that. Joy for dev deviled eggs. That's, a, that's right. We're all out. Uh, out of eggs. Joyfully rang bells this morning from Yvonne. Joyful for cell phones to be with friends and families. Need prayers for the, uh, a sister, Sheila, and her husband, Tron. In Maya and in Indiana, uh, they are all now in quarantine. Um, it's from Danielle. Mm, yeah. Oh, I see. This is from Danielle, and Yvonne is still asleep. Hopefully, Yvonne's rest is wonderful. Mm -hmm. uh, Beth, thanks for, for the song in Malvern Hills this morning. Oh, cool. Very cool. Mm -hmm. If you have others, feel free to send them in. We're going to move to our offertory song. <laughs> but that doesn't mean that we can't uh, read them afterwards. If you have extra money that you want to get rid of by giving it to the church, there is a place on your bulletin that you can click and you can give it to us. I encourage you to also think about giving it to agencies right now that are supporting those who are in great need. Um, we most definitely appreciate anything that you have, um, but consider yourself, consider all of us um, when you consider giving. And thank you.
Jesus say I am this dark world's light Look unto me Thy morn shall rise And all thy day be bright I look to Jesus And I found in him my star, my sun In him that light of life I'll walk traveling days are done and in that light of life I'll walk till traveling days are There were some concerns lifted up, uh, or joys for Maya, fur baby, uh, prayers for Bill in Florida, who will be undergoing cancer surgery tomorrow. It's from Willie. Uh, healing prayers and thanksgiving for, I'm assuming this is Danielle's big sister, Mary. And I think that's, I think we got them. Yep. I'm going to lift up, um, Natalia, who uh, before all of this uh, social distancing happened, um, had just moved up to Asheville from Costa Rica and um, was just digging into our community, is good friends with Ashley and Andy and Annabelle. Um, Want to lift up her and her fiance Ricky. Ricky lost his mother, who we've been praying for, Elvira Sanabria, um, yesterday. And so prayers for them, um, for strength for patience, for space to grieve, and for healing. Now we shift our focus to Christ's table that is big enough for the whole world welcoming and open to all of us. Um, and at this time, I know there are many people who are not receiving communion and, um, and I respect that and I'm grateful for, um, grateful for the, the time when we will come back together and celebrate the Holy Eucharist all together. Know that Christ is present to you. But I also invite you to join with us in the Holy Eucharist. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. We praise you and we bless you, holy and gracious God, source of life abundant. From before time you made ready the creation. Your spirit moved over the deep and brought all things into being. Sun, moon, and stars, earth, winds, and waters, and every living thing. You made us in your image and taught us to walk in your ways. But we rebelled against you and wandered far away. And yet, as a mother cares for her children, you would not forget us. Time and again you called us to live in the fullness of your love. And so this day we join with saints and angels in the chorus of praise that rings through eternity, lifting our voices to magnify you as we sing. 
Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in Glory and honor and praise to you, holy and living God, to deliver us from the power of sin and death and to reveal the riches of your grace. You looked with favor upon Mary, your willing servant, that she might conceive and bear a son, Jesus, the holy child of God. Living among us, Jesus loved us. He broke bread with outcasts and sinners healed the sick and proclaimed good news to the poor. He yearned to draw all the world to himself, yet we were heedless of his call to love. Then the time came for him to complete upon the cross the sacrifice of his life and to be glorified by you. On the night before he died for us, Jesus was at table with his friends. He took bread, gave thanks to you, broke it and gave it to them and said, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. As supper was ending, Jesus took the cup of wine. Again, he gave thanks to you, gave it to them and said, drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. <coughs> Now gathered at your table, O God of all creation, and remembering Christ crucified and risen, who was and is and is to come, we offer you our gifts of bread and wine and ourselves a living sacrifice. Pour out your spirit upon these gifts that they may be the body and blood of Christ. Breathe your spirit over the whole earth and make us your new creation, the body of Christ given for the world you have made. In the fullness of time, bring us with all your saints from every tribe and language and people and nation to feast at the banquet prepared from the foundation of the world. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, to you be honor, glory, and praise forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father in heaven, hallowed Lord be your, your name. name. Your kingdom come, come, your will, will be, be done, done on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. 
Give us us today today our our daily bread. bread. Forgive Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. I left out an important part in the bulletin, but I'll say it now. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. 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 The communion hymn today is Whatever Noises Are in Your House. If you have a favorite Easter song that you want to sing right now, go ahead and sing it. If you want your communion song to be the silence um, around you or the cars driving by, the hymn is the noises in your own home. Friends, these are the gifts of God for you, the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ loved you and died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Thanks be to God. the bread of heaven. Blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. Your son, I lay my hands upon you in the name of our friend and Savior, Jesus Christ. May you know the healing power of God's love and closeness of the Creator every day of your life. join me in our post-communion hymn, sorry, (laughs) prayer. It's found in your bulletin. Let us say together, God of abundance, you have fed us with the bread of life and cup of salvation. salvation. You have have united united us with Christ and one another, and you have made us one with all your people people in heaven and and on earth. Now send send us forth in the power of your spirit. spirit. That, that we, we may proclaim your redeeming love to the world and continue forever in the risen life of Christ our Savior. Amen. You're on your own. <laughs> okay. <laughs> the blessing of the risen one lead you in the pathways of love and everlasting life. Amen. what it sounded like a minute ago. Jesus Christ is risen today. Alleluia. Our triumphant holy day. Alleluia. Who did once upon the cross Alleluia. Supper to
to love and serve our God. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. 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 <laughs> invite you to join us for Zoom coffee hour. Um, I will try to figure it out and I think it'll be probably as complicated for me as it was last week, but y'all will still be able to join. Um, follow the same links and the same passwords as last week and the week before. Those are in your email. If you don't have them, uh, shoot me an email, give me a call, and we will set you up. But they are all the same as last week. Go in peace to love and serve our God. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia. Alleluia.